friends. I am really excited about tonight's live. In case you didn't pick that up from advance notice, um, from all the other the little advertisements I was doing all week. Um, I have a guest this week, Dana Myers, um, who I met not that long ago, actually, maybe a month or two ago. Um, she runs something called Booty Parlor, which frankly, I think is just the coolest thing ever. And she is all about, aha, uh -huh, here we go. She is all about bringing sexy into mom. So I think she's there and I'm waiting for her to join in, but that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Like, my, it's, oh, <laughs> Dana. When technology works, I'm always in shock. That's uh, It's such a, an amazing miracle. It is. It, you are an amazing miracle. Thank you. I feel like an amazing miracle. <laughs> you should, because you are an amazing miracle. And I was just saying, like, how excited I am and that we met not that long ago, but mm -hmm. you're like, you're like a little shock of electricity. That's what I've decided. You're just like, you're just pump energy and you're so much fun. And I just feel like I've known you forever. So thank you. I know. I felt that way about you too. When we met, I was just like, oh, okay. Sisters. Great. Exactly. Familiar yeah. reunion. I got kindred, it. Kindred spirits, kindred spirits. So yeah. I started introducing you as, you know, Dana Myers, XOXO, who <laughs> talks all about. I'm going to turn this up. Hugs talks all about sort of being your sexual self and maintaining your sexual self after you have kids, which I think is so critical and so important. And you do it in such a fun way. And honestly, I saw your little booty dance yeah. yesterday or the day before. I loved it. Loved it, your little booty dance. I'm yeah. always moving. You know, for me, it's like movement is just such a way to just stay in my body and stir up stagnant energy and release stress and stay grounded and really stay sensual because then everything else feels better. No, <laughs> it's like really hard. <laughs> you know, people often think about doing things that are sexy for other people. And I feel like it's all about getting in touch with our sexy selves and yeah. dancing really does that for me. Like, I don't care what I look like. It feels yeah. sexy, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. So before we do anything else, just tell us about yourself and tell us how booty parlor. I was laughing as I was doing the little like uh, stories today about this. I yeah. Booty Parlor is the freak, most freaking, like, clever name. And I don't think you ever told me where it came from. So Yeah, yeah. So I, I grew up, um, well, I grew up with a makeup artist mother, very much in the beauty parlor. She um, had the little space, and I would come in and help her do inventory and put her lip glosses away. And I would see all the hairstylists styling their clients. And it was like a you know, a world of women, right? It was like a world of female empowerment. Um, and so I really watched my mom make women over and help them go from sort of sitting down and saying, oh, but this and this and this. And he said, you know, it's like we are, we'll start complaining about ourselves. And she would kind of help them transform with a bit of girlfriend to girlfriend conversation and lip gloss and some relationship gab. Um, so beauty and female empowerment were a big thing. And then I was also just really curious, um, sexually curious teenager. And so, and my parents acknowledged it and they didn't try to squash it, which was really, really such a gift to me. Um, and so I became that girl that all my friends were asking about, like orgasms and love and sex and beauty. And so that was my thing, beauty and sex. And then I grew up and went into the music business. Um, but I was always buying my friends their vibrators. And this was like 15, 16 years ago when the sexual wellness business, as we know it, was still the triple X business, right? And I was like, right, oh, and vibrators hadn't really made it to prime time yet. Yeah, well, it was sort of like right after Sex in the City and the Rabbit. But, this, but still, the shopping experience was bad. And I was like, what about the booty parlor? It's a place where we could go, where we could get sexy things that would make us feel confident and have so much fun. And then I was like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Booty parlor. That's it. It's the beauty parlor for your love life. I'm going to start this business. And I went and I talked to my then boyfriend who's now been my husband for 15 years. And he had actually had a very similar idea, which is crazy. And we raised some money. Wait, wrote what was his idea? Just his idea. So he came from the UK. Um, and there's a very big sort of like chain it's a little bit cheeky but it's like a chain of stores sexy stores called Ann Summers and they also have a party plan and they were a business that was able to really coexist in multiple channels of direct sales 
wholesale, retail. So we loved their model, and we were like, let's do it for the States. That was that he had done research into that. Um, and so it was just this kind of light bulb moment for us. And he was in the film business, and I was in music uh, in Los Angeles. And we just decided, just like, screw it. We raised some money, wrote a plan, started formulating products, started it out of our living room 15 years ago. And then, yeah, it's been such a wild um, business ride and personal ride. It's amazing. And I, you know, it, it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's having another moment in my life, which is wonderful. Cause I'd sort of put it aside a little bit the last few years to write books and do courses. And we had really set the business up uh, to run internationally with a partner and it became very hands off and, and beautifully so, but I, I realized I missed it and I kind of forgotten about it. And now I'm like fully in it again. And it's bringing me so much joy. It's so great. And, I'm so excited. And the world has changed a little bit, right? The, the, the way people shop has changed, right? Yes. The, how, how people address sex toys, the ubiquitous yes. up, but Yeah, right? Yeah. Yes, totally. And you know, this time around, our play is definitely more um, in our beauty, with our beauty and body line. Um, and really, I have to say, you know, we've had to tone it down, well, for a number of reasons, some because of the clients we were working with, like Victoria's Secret wanted the beauty, they didn't want the toys, right? Um, but the was market that was, were, was that because they were nervous about the toys? Or yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't that but, make but you the, a little crazy? Doesn't that make you a little? It made crazy? it made us so crazy because that's what women always wanted from us. Um, but anyway, anyway, you know, it's been interesting because it's so hard um, to advertise and reach your customers around the topic of sex on Facebook and Instagram. You have to be so careful. Um, you know, you can't even really use the word sexy. So it's just complex and interesting, but. I also see it as like another business challenge. And at this age and at this sort of state in womanhood, like I don't need to take on the world. I'm just gonna like find the joy and do it in the most enjoyable way. And I'm really loving that vibe. Like I'm hitting 45 right now and I'm just like, yeah. Happy almost time. birthday. Happy almost birthday. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm just rambling. I'm just rambling. No, so good. I love it. I totally love it because I think Booty Parlor is so you. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, yes. it's you who you are. It's almost yeah. like it doesn't exist, like it may exist outside of you, but I feel like you're so central to what it is. Yeah. You know? yeah. Thank you. You know, I'm just sort of like, I'm just, again, I'm just kind of reclaiming that. But what's also so beautiful is that so many of the women who've supported us over the years, like diehards, like almost cult-like fans, you know, like it's a little cult favorite. They're, they're coming back, when can I get this? Please, can I get this? I wore this scent to my wedding. It just made me feel so glamorous and beautiful and lit up. And it's like, you know, that's a real joy to connect with women on this on beautiful that. kind of, the beauty way, right? It's the beauty way, finding beauty in ourselves, in our skin, in our bodies, and colors, and shimmers, and scents, and it's wonderful. I mean, that is why I loved your um, your video the other day. I made reference to that, you did this booty video, and you started by saying, "Oh yeah, my, my booty is not my favorite part of it's my not. body, but I am that, I think you have a great booty. Okay, Thank so, you. but I'm like, <laughs> but you're like, but I don't care. I'm going to treat it really well. I'm going to treat it as it's not the, my ass I sit on all day. And you yeah. just like rocked it. And I feel right. like that is the message we have to be giving women because it's really hard to be present sexually for sure if you can't inhabit your body. And, you know, sometimes our partners see us so well and women can't even hear that. Like the partner's mm -hmm. like, oh, you're so beautiful. Your stomach is so gorgeous. Yeah. I love your boobs. I love your ass. And then women are like, oh my God, how could you say that? I have a roll of fat here. I have, you know? Yeah, yeah. So they're not only like depriving themselves of receiving that beautiful adoration and those compliments, but they're also then rejecting that compliment from their partner and training their partner not to, you know, to feel rejected when they compliment. So yeah, it's about getting into your body and finding your own way. I think a lot of people, um, you know, I would, I would say these messages, stand in the mirror and love up on this part of your body and transform the negative body banter into the sexy self-love. And for some women, that was too far of a jump. And so it's almost like we have to talk about, okay, well, where, how do you go from like hating a body part to just respecting it? Because you can get to love and adoration and celebration if you're at respect, right? So it's like finding ways to respect it and 
And that's different for everyone. You know, there's like a little different trigger for everyone. And I, I often feel like that's a really important message for the women who have kids, especially mm -hmm. ones who have daughters, but I think for sons these days also, mm -hmm. that somehow if you can't learn how to respect your own body and be yeah. sort of happy with your body, you're going to end up with a daughter who's yeah. going to not feel happy in her body. And totally. that none of us want that. None of us want that. Like, I feel like yeah. even those of us who stand in front of a mirror and say, ooh, you know, want our daughters to grow up feeling different than that yeah. and our sons yeah. and the yeah. only way to do that and that's so hard for people to hear that but the only way for, to do that is to kind of reclaim your body like you're talking at respect i think that's a great way to go mm -hmm. like respecting your own body yeah and also just like pl pleasure just like put your hands on your body because it feels good right you know it's but again a lot of people you have to like un you know um Unlearn. Unfuck yourself, you know? You have to, like, Unlearn. look at, okay, where did I learn that? Right. Where did I learn that I should talk bad about my body or that I shouldn't, you know? I was talking to a woman today who is absolutely gorgeous, stunning, and, and was talking down to herself a lot about her beauty or not letting it, like, not talking about it in the way that I could tell she wanted to. And she said, well, my, my mom, my sister, um wasn't as pretty as me they're twins and my mom always told me to tone it down around her so that she didn't feel bad about my beauty and so we all learn our ways from deep 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 long ago and so sometimes you got to really go down and look and say what was that feeling where did i learn that is it still true can i rewrite that belief and what new belief do I want? And that's just like the raw work of being a, a human and a woman. No, I think, I think, and it's so critical because especially, especially I know people may be watching from religious communities and especially mm. as you start developing sort of into womanhood, there's a tendency of like wanting you to cover up, that, you know, wanting you to sort of take more mm -hmm. back seat, um, mm -hmm. whether it's spoken or unspoken. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I had a client today who was so close with her dad and he was so loving and he stopped touching her when she was like 12 or 13. And he mm -hmm. wasn't clear. He just stopped giving her massages. He stopped mm -hmm. snuggling her. And mm -hmm. she still walks around the wounds from that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I think we're really, you know, we really see the results of that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to be brave, right? Like you have, we just, we just uncovered two very like powerful family stories, right? That, that grown women carry with them. And we all have these stories. And I do think it's like a very brave choice to say, I want to uncover that. And I want to, you know, that's a lot of the work that I've been really interested in lately is like the, the initiations through the different stages of our life, right? And like- Like, like writing new narratives. Yeah, writing yeah, narratives. and right. saying, okay, that was then, what do I wanna take from it? What do I wanna let die so that I can birth something new in my sex life, in my work life, in my friendships, in the way I feel about my body and my sensuality, all these different things, in the way I shop, like all, you know, all the things. Right, I think, we, and, and it's, tr it's so interesting because you and I are sort of at different life stages. You're in your mid-40s. You have two children who are like in the like young teens. Seven right? and ten. Yeah, Seven like and young, pre-adolescents. Yeah. I'm 59. I've grown kids. And I feel like life just keeps changing and mm -hmm. we got to keep sort of owning it. So mm -hmm. I do want to shift gears because I want to talk about life with sex with kids. Yes, yeah, sorry, I was exactly all up on a different I, well, zone. There's so many things for us to talk about, so I think we'll have to do this yeah. again. But I want to talk about sex because that really is a little bit sort of where you kind of enter the the the, the narrative, mm -hmm. and I feel like that is such a struggle for so many women. They mm -hmm. somehow feel like once they have kids, maybe their sex life is over. Mm -hmm. And you want, can you want to just start speaking to that a little bit, and then I'll join in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's the most common cliche, right? The sexless mother, you know, like marriage and, you know, parenthood is where your sex life goes to die. That's what we're all kind of conditioned to, to think and believe. And of course, there's the real hormonal shifts that you can speak to so beautifully that, that truly happen. But then there's also all these other blocks that get in the way when we have young children, the lack of me time, you know, exhaustion, 
uh, feeling less confident about your body after all the changes it's been through, building resentment in your relationship because you're doing more, they're doing less, and the, you know, the dom all the domestic stuff that happens and the kind of loss of romance. So there's a lot of things, but also I think the biggest thing, um, at least with, I would say, the majority of, of women, or at least one really common factor in this loss of libido is, and it's a sneaky one because you don't really realize it's happening. It's the loss of freedom. And it's the loss of like freedom. I remember before I had kids, I would go out whenever I wanted and walk around and go to the shops and say hi to my neighbors and the strangers and the coffee shops and yoga classes. And that freedom is really sexy. And then suddenly, like, it's not forever, but your world gets a bit small, right? A smaller, more closed in, more routine. Routine. And, I would yeah. say routine. I think routine is such a big one. And you almost have to, you're forced to create a routine if you want to keep some level of sanity. Totally. But then you also must recognize that you must create more eroticism to balance out the routine and find some place in the middle. Like you have to get really creative. Otherwise, you know, I think people wait, they're like, when is it going to come back? Well, your sex drive doesn't just come back and strike you down. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Say that again. Like, I just, people are like, when am I going to get in the mood again? Yeah. Um, really? It's just going to show up. It's going to I always like say, don't wait, create. Little snippets of sensuality, sensual inputs all throughout your day. Noticing how things taste, how things feel. Letting yourself fantasize a little, even if it's silly or jokey, you know little bits, little bits, making a solo date with yourself to masturbate once a week, just to keep that baseline of desire kind of humming along for yourself. Because if you've got desire for yourself, if you can find that again, then you can start to bring that into your relationship and evolve your relationship with kids in the picture. But it's very hard. It's very hard to just say, oh, when's it going to come back so that I can please my partner. I feel like this concept, it's such a fundamental concept, the concept that desire doesn't just appear, right? You yeah. have to create desire. And I feel like that people don't quite get that. And I, I understand yeah. that. I really understand that. Like, I feel like it's such a bizarre um, fantasy that our world's created that like, oh my God, you know, desire, you have desire and then you go and have sex. And I'm like, that's bullshit you know it's, a, it's like it is it's like a it's patriarchal bullshit and it's not meant against a man it's, a it's fairy against tale. a system it, it's, it's of a fairy, fairy tale it's a fairy tale and then people are like well i shouldn't have to i shouldn't have to like turn on my desire i it should just appear and i'm like where where did you get that concept like, where, <laughs> where did you get that right <laughs> right you watch Thank the movies you. And, yes. you watch the movies and or the first six months, six months to 12 to one year of a relationship, to be fair, is the most crazy cocktail of hormones. It's like being on drugs. And yes, yeah. there is spontaneous desire, but that's like when it appears. And to think that that's so our, so now we have to figure out like, what do you do? Like you're sitting there and you're like, I haven't wanted to have sex in a year, you yeah. know, Bacheva. what do we do? So I'm yeah. saying to you, Dana, what do I do? Yeah, yeah. Well, look, I would always recommend, you know, again, this first, this practice of sensual inputs and almost challenging yourself to start noticing the sensuality within the regular course of your day. So I remember in New York, after I had my second child, I would go to the grocery store in Brooklyn and, you know, stand in the vegetable aisle and like watch the carrots being misted. And they were like thick and sexy. And I was like, oh, they're wet. You know, and I was like, this is silly. This is really silly, but I'm entertaining myself. And I was like, oh, I can feel something, right? So I was like, okay, cool. It's a game, I'll just keep playing it. And that really helped me just, again, percolate my libido again at a very like, just nice little hummy level. I'm a huge fan of masturbation for any woman and all men and all humans, but especially once you've had kids, because it's really like a statement where you're saying, I'm putting myself first. And this is my five or 10 or 15 or 20 minutes alone. I'm putting my pleasure first because I'm serving everybody else all the time. But I'm going to take this moment to release my emotions, to infuse my body with pleasure, to, to tune into who I am as a woman. 
I'm going to add and, here, if you're watching this and you're thinking, really? Because a lot of people feel like their masturbation, if they ever did it, kind of fell by the wayside when they were single or, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, with the kids. It is a great time to get it. And if you feel like awkward, because I think a lot of people start feeling awkward, somehow masturbating when you're 18 feels different than masturbating when you're 32. I will say mm -hmm. to you, awkward is good. Awkward mm -hmm. means you're in the right direction. Heading yeah. awkward means you're doing something new and different and you're growing. And sex was really awkward when you started and that was great. So mm -hmm. awkward is good. So I'm just throwing mm -hmm. that advertisement in for the, okay, keep going. I really I like that. No, I okay. really, really like that. I really like how you express that. Thank you. Um, and then, yeah, so, you know, some people love me for saying this and some people hate me, but it really does work for everyone. It's, it's a practice of scheduling sex. You know, every, my calendar is on the, in, in the inside of the house, but every week I look at my week, I see what are the moving parts and pieces, where are we going to have a fun session, where are we going to have a quickie, you know, where can I have a solo? And if two of those three sessions happen, or one, but it's freaking amazing, then it's, it's exciting. And having it in there means you can look forward to it, anticipate it, talk about it, what mood do I want? What erotic energy do I want to explore? What might I wear? What might we watch? What might I read? And so it becomes this event. And we all like events, right? So we all want to show up. We want to dress up, get ready for an event. So if you make it an event, you show up with an open mind, you know, knowing that the planning means that your sex life is a priority. And then you're like proud of yourself because you're following through, but you allow for flexibility because sh shit happens then suddenly you're having regular, consistent, and really good sex, and things start to reawaken. I, I, I feel like, you know, I joked around in the beginning, look at those hearts coming up about being kindred spirits. I feel like that is one of the most important messages. The fact that desire mm -hmm. doesn't jump in, it's not spontaneous. And the fact that if you don't schedule sex, it doesn't happen. And having seen thousands of women as patients, mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you, I can tell you for a fact, that the women who have long-term regular sex have scheduled it. They don't, they, sometimes they don't even realize they're scheduling it. Like mm -hmm. if you talk to them, they'll be like, I have sex, we have sex on the weekends or we have mm -hmm. sex on the weekends and the ones during the week or we never let more than three or four days go by. They're not realizing if they are scheduling it. They yeah. are scheduling yeah. it and they're thinking about it. Yeah, and because it becomes a practice. Yeah. Correct. You you gave a really good, and if anybody's watching here, you, we should follow Dana, but also you should look for the one where she talks about how frequently to have sex because I thought, you nailed it. Like you told, I have some data on that, but you nailed it. You want, can you talk about that for a couple minutes? Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to remember our, our text thread. That was, um, you were, you were talking about how frequently you have sex. You were very yeah. open. Dana yeah. is amazingly open about, and she talked about <laughs> how like she, you know, some people say once a week. Some yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So most people, um, will, I can't remember the study, but most people will say twice, but it's really just once. People exaggerate because it's something that we feel shame about, right? Because to your point, we weren't educated on the ebb and flow of our drives and allowing it to be sort of a normal part of our, of ourselves. Um, but yeah, for me personally, you know, like I said, I try to plan one, what I call a long love session where I'm gonna dress up in something. I love lingerie, I love adorning my body. You know, I think it's fun and feminine and exciting. And um, even, it's interesting because I've gained, I don't know, 15 pounds during this, you know, COVID thing. And, and you know, looking at my body being bigger now, you know, it's a little bit of a push pull, but then I put on my lingerie, I was like, oh, this is, this is yummy. Like there's all kinds of extra bits to sort of, you know, squeeze. And, and it's just, this is the practice of like 20 years of really loving my body in the mirror. You know, this is like the effects, like I'm excited talking about myself. <laughs> and, this, and this is why I love you. Just saying. Okay. Anyway. Thank you. No, so like one long love session and then like one quickie, you know, one little like physical moment. Let's just like get in there together. Um, and oftentimes, I don't have the desire to have an orgasm in that session. That's more for me just about connection and because my husband and I also work together. So we have to make sure that there's like, we're breaking up any work tent. You know, it has to have that just physicality. Um, and then 
almost every week, I, I have a date with myself where I just get super witchy and, you know, get out all my toys and crystals and music. And I just, I just have fun. <laughs> How do you find get the privacy to do that? I'm actually curious about that. I feel that like is like a military operation. It's a military <laughs> operation. It is. And I'm like, okay, at 0300, the kids will go outside and take the dog on a walk. When I, you know, it's like, but I, I arrange it. I just arrange it. And I'm lucky that I have, you know, childcare. But iPads work for the kids, too. Does your you husband know. know? Like, are you open about the fact that you are going off to, yes. like, have a party yes. by yourself? Yes, yes. And I think that's, that's, I think that's, um less common in relationships. I don't think as many couples talk about, you know, their masturbation practices as they, as they should or could. Right. Um, because I think a lot of women, women tell me all the time, well, I have such a low sex drive. I shouldn't, I don't feel like I should masturbate. I feel like I should save that for him for like the once in a whatever that for him. And I'm like, that's just the complete, that's, that's the wrong logic. <laughs> like, you get that, 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 you know? Fire. Fire doesn't get to be less when you move it to a southern flame, right? Fire that's doesn't right. get, right. That's right. That's right. So, yeah, he knows. I mean, look, I like to be as alone as possible, you know? So I, I do try to find those moments where, you know, everyone's out of the house. Um, and I, I just make it happen. I just, I mean, like, you know, I, I, you know, you find ways. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's great. I, I do want to tell you, there was a study. I, for years, people asked me, you know, how often should we be having sex? And I'm like, I can give you the sex therapist answer, which is as often as works for you is fine, which ah, ah, like I just, I always felt like I said, do you want the sex therapist? I, you know, and, but I said my gut feeling, my gut feeling having talked now and worked with thousands of women is that most couples are fine if they're having sex about once a week. You know, mm -hmm. twice a week is great. Mm -hmm. When it gets to be less than once every two weeks, mm -hmm. you start seeing cracks. Like, that was my sense. And then there was a study that came out. There was a study of thousands of couples. It was done in the UK. And the level of happiness goes up mm -hmm. until people are having sex once a week, and then it plateaus. And that, this is an average. Some people want to have sex five times a week, right? Mm -hmm. but, Which but is. It goes up. And I was like, yay, like so there was data, you know, I love data, data makes me happy because I know a bunch of his opinion. But um, so I loved it. I felt like you so nailed that you were like, yeah. you, you talked about how the fact that the relationship starts, he starts to get grumpy, you start to get grumpy, like, yeah, like, there's definitely more bickering. And look, I think that, you know, the most po the, the most toxic thing in a relationship is, is resentment, right, which is just unmet needs. And you know, it's like sex, money, parenting, right? So if there's unmet needs, if you're not getting your love needs met in these big categories of a relationship, you're right, there's, there will be the cracks. But if you're nur nourishing and nurturing it, then it's just, there's that buffer. There's that good feeling, physical intimacy buffer. And, um, you know, I've been married now, uh, let's see, 15 years and together for 17. And I feel like it just keeps getting better. You know, there's an ebb and flow to every relationship. But it's like, if you keep going in the right direction, keep expanding and keep opening, keep communicating. Um, I think you just get more and more real and raw and you expand your capacity for pleasure with each other. No, I, I, I think that that is so true. And I think that people's idea, again, these romanticized views, you know, I laugh when people say to me, Schedule sex, that's so unromantic. And I'm like, know. you know what's fucking unromantic? Not having any sex. Totally. That is unromantic. And, and if you're never having any sex, you're never going to have great sex. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, e e right? Totally. Totally. A hundred percent. And all, yeah, women will say, but my husband told me, he said, but that's not romantic. I feel like I'm another item on your to-do list. And I said, just tell him, this is you making your sex life a priority, babe. This is me making our sex life a priority. Like, who doesn't want to hear that from his partner? No, it's to it, it all depends on how you're thinking about it, you know? Yes. And that really is, um, I feel like, so So we're going to be wrapping up in a minute, which is crazy because I feel like we just, know, we just started started. now. But we're going to do this again. But um, if you had to give people, like, one piece of advice, like, one piece of advice for young mothers who say, I really, really want my sex life to live on, what do you think it would be? 
Yeah, I would say be brave and bold and prioritize yourself and prioritize masturbating at least once a week. Just make it a non-negotiable. That's your time. You get it. And you're just going to start to feel yourself and explore your orgasms again and, and get to be in bloom again. If you, if anybody's feeling like they need more information about uh, masturbating or, or I think actually I just put out an orgasm guide. If you go to May's Women's Health, um, there's a, uh, a, a button you can click on to get an or orgasm guide. So I would recommend you do that if you're starting to get nervous about like, oh my God, now I have to go figure out how to go back and find <laughs> my body again. Um, where do, how do people find you? What do people, yeah. yeah. Yes, well, um, you can find me on Instagram, Dana Myers XOXO, and with Booty Parlor, it's bootyparlor.com. We have some amazing Black Friday offers that are coming this week. <gasps> what's this? What's this? <laughs> Dana, what's so this? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh, you want some massage oil? Okay. Um, wait, wait, bring that tapping. back. I want to see the massage oil. Bring that yes. back. Yes. What is that? It's a warming massage oil. What's it called? It's, it's called Don't Stop. It's called Don't Stop because that's what you're going to say when it's... you're having a sexy massage experience. Wait, wait, it's a beautiful bottle. Can I Thank say you. Bring it back. It's beautiful. Is it like a circle in the middle? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a round ball. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. I love that. Okay. So that's beautiful. And then we have our yummy lip glosses with aphrodisiacs which is really fun. You know, again, I'm all about playing with my femininity and letting that, you know, fuel me. And that really comes across in Booty Parlor's stuff. This is a gift set with um, our skin, honey. It's a kissable body topping. So you just drizzle it anywhere you want to kiss or be kissed. You know, bring that sort of- Oh, that's um, amazing. Yeah, igniting the senses. Look at me, I'm like leaning forward. I'm leaning I will forward send as if, as you if I some. Lean I will to send it. you some. This is our kissable body shimmer, um, a little shimmering mist. You know, we have all kinds of fun things. And, um, oh, I have a, a blindfold. Oh. <laughs> so that Do you have handcuffs? Really... Do you have handcuffs to go in? We used to. We used to. We used to. Um, but, yeah, now we do mostly the body and beauty. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's amazing. So booty parlor is where they find that, all that yes. stuff. Yes. Thank, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. This was awesome. I'm so excited. Woman. I'm excited for your book. I'm excited to see you in action. And I'm so excited that we maybe when the this. book comes out, we'll do a giveaway with your products in my book. I'd love to. That'd be amazing. Have a good night. Thanks, hon. Okay. Good night. Thanks Bye. for having me.